We can beat any takeaway curry with this authentic Indian chickpea curry. Let's show you how we do it. To start off with, we need to do some prep. So dice three onions and then place one tin of chopped tomatoes into a blender and blend until smooth. The best thing about curry is how they can bring simple vegetables to life. So if you want more of our curry recipes, hit that subscribe button. It's time to start cooking, so get a large pan on a low to medium heat and add in your sunflower oil. The best thing about this curry is the perfect blend of spices and to start things off we add bay leaves, cardamom pods and cinnamon. After 1-2 to two minutes you can now go in with your onions. You need to cook your onions for quite a long time so we cooked our onions down for 15 minutes on a low heat until they're nice and soft and they start to go golden on the edges. Now add your garlic and ginger paste and continue to saute for another 1-2 to two minutes until they're nice and brown. You really need to take your time in making the base for this curry because that's where all the depth of the flavours comes from. So we've gone in with our tomato puree and then we're going to go in with our previously blended tomatoes. To add a bit more texture to the curry sauce we're going to add one tin of chopped tomatoes that haven't been blended down. If you prefer a smoother sauce then you can blend both tins in the beginning. The flavours keep coming so we're going to add our seasoning and our spices. So we've gone in with salt, chilli powder and ground cumin. Mix well to make sure those spices are evenly distributed and then leave to simmer on a low heat for 10 to 15 minutes to really let that flavour develop. Add in your drained chickpeas and mix in really well. We've added in three tins here but if you prefer a saucier curry, then just add two. We're not finished with the spices yet, so add your garam masala and mix in well, and then we're gonna take some time to let the flavor really infuse with those chickpeas. So leave um, a low to medium heat and cover, and leave to simmer for 10 to 15 minutes to really let that flavor develop. We're almost finished with our curry now, so just garnish with some coriander and then you're ready to plate up. To balance out the spice in the curry, top with a little bit of plain yoghurt and for a little bit of extra tang, add a squeeze of lime. So many spices and so many flavours have gone into this curry. This curry goes perfectly well with rotli, naan or rice.